Welcome to Research Methods. Um, last time we met, we were talking about how to do research and then how to select a topic. Today we continue by discussing how to start a literature review. Now, to start a literature review is, helps us to be able to find the available literature that will be relevant to our topic. Any type of research you're going to do, you need to write something about the topic. And be able to write something about the topic, you need to be able to find some literature. So we're going to learn how to find some literature in the part one of literature review. Good. Now, so our key topics will be defining literature review and then identifying and locating literature. That's what we'll try to cover up in this session. This is focused on chapter three of our text for this particular topic that's research made easy. You may want to get one to be able to follow up with what we are doing. Good. So defining literature review. So what is literature review? Now, literature review is a synthesis of available resources and materials which have a strong relation with the topic in question and is accompanied by a description and a critical evaluation and, and a comparative analysis of each work. Now, the definition is quite long, but I'm going to take it one step after the other. Every literature review is focused on a question or area of research. So when we say literature review is a synthesis, what we mean is that is bringing two or more things together. Synthesis means that you are bringing two or more things together. Now, when you bring these two or more things together, what are you trying to do? You have brought some literature together to be able to get your work to be done. So a literature review is not about only one reading you have read. It means that there should be one reading and another reading. That is about bringing two or more things together. The second thing about literature review definition is that a synthesis of available resources. When we say available, it means that something is accessible, that something has been put out there, or the material you are using has been published. That's what we try to focus on. The reason why is the majority of this should be published material so that others can be able to check the reliability of what you are trying to say. Otherwise, if you go and take something from a, a village meeting, a minutes for a village meeting used to do your literature review or get the whole work is full of that. What is going to happen is that nobody has access to that. So how can we verify scientifically that what you are saying is true? So it's important that in conducting any literature review, you pick available resources and materials. And as resources and materials cover a number of uh, items, including publication, um, general publications, books, uh, periodicals, and then um, all available resources that may be relevant to what topic you are trying to research on. We'll come back to that uh, later. Now, whatever your resources that you pick up, the, the definition says that it has to have a strong relation with the topic in question. Means that if you are doing a literature review or you are doing a, a research on a topic on um, causing financial loss to the state uh, or corruption and, uh, and public administration, you can't go and read on fishing under the sea unless you want to talk about the fishing industry and corruption one thing that you want to be sure about is the fact that your literature review is focused on the topic that you are fo researching on so the, the articles that you pick the literature that you pick has to have, have a relationship with the topic that you are focusing on another thing that you actually have to the definition is is that it has to be accompanied by a description means that you have to try to find out what is written in that article what is written in that literature and not just take it as it is, you may have to also ask some critical evaluation and compare the works. So what we are going to learn throughout the session of li um, about literature review is to understand how to identify the available resources, how to do the synthesis by describing and critically evaluating every work and comparing them to be able to produce a piece of write-up. That's what we'll learn in part one of literature review and part two. So in the part one, we'll focus on the first part of the definition, which talks about the fact that finding available resources which have a strong relation with the topic in question. Good. Now, so why do we do literature review? We do literature review for a number of reasons, but most importantly, literature review forms the very basis of uh, your argument. So just take your example, you go to a court of law to defend someone and you don't know anything about the case or you don't even know anything about law. So how are you going to defend the person? That because you are in every research you're carrying out, you are presenting arguments, you need to be able to understand what arguments exist in the literature concerning what you are actually trying to write about. Hence, in, in, in doing your literature review, you are getting the language, the language that you are going to use for your argument. You're going to get your very basis of your argument, the points that you're going to say and put across. For example, you're talking about chronic poverty, you don't even know the definition of poverty. Where do you start from? 
So anytime you are doing a literature review, it's, you are doing it because you are trying to get the very content that you need to be able to put out arguments in your write-up. So literature review places your research in context within your discipline, demonstrate how your research improves your discipline. In other words, literature review is the meat of your project. It, it forms the very basis of your argument. From the very basis of your argument. Secondly, the literature review is also helps you to justify your research. Establish the basis in which this research is going to be done. I pointed it out that when we're selecting a topic, that we select a topic and we, one of the reasons why we select a topic and be able to come up with a title is that we are able to find something, a gap in the literature and that helps us to be able to formulate a, a title. Now, that gap is based on the literature review you have done. So being able to find a gap in the literature, a point of need where you can demonstrate originality or contribute something new to, in, to, the science, to, to science comes from the fact that you have read some literature and identify what has not been done. So by doing the literature review, you establish what has been done and what has not been done in your discipline or the topic that you have cho chosen and be able to define how you are going to improve that area by doing that research. So if you don't do a literature review, you can't even know what new thing you can bring to knowledge. So doing a literature review helps you to be able to establish the gaps in your field of research that merits closer investigation. It helps you to demonstrate your work will improve the field. How will it improve your, the field that you are doing your research in? And then what has been done and what has not been done so that you establish your originality. Moreover, it also shows that you have read extensively or you know the authors that actually do research in that particular area. What do I mean by that? As a supervisor, whenever you bring your long essay, I flip to the back to check whether the, if you are writing on mobiles and micro trading, you have written, you have actually quoted any person that actually has written a paper on that area. Or you have been able to find out who are the key authors, like you're talking about ICT and climate change in developing countries, and you fail to mention someone like Richard Hicks. Then what actually are you doing? Because we realize that he has done quite some extensive work and he has a, even has a center that focuses on research on that area. So if you are writing on that topic and you are not being able to reference the key authors in the area, it looks like you are not read extensively. So by doing your literature review, we are, you're able to show that you have read extensively and you have read relevant work. Do you understand? Yeah. You have read relevant work. Now, another thing the literature review does is that it helps you to establish what will be the focus of your research. Because now you have found a lot of problems in the literature. You want to choose one particular one of them. So which one are you going to choose? The second thing is that it helps you to ask questions that may, you may have not thought about when you began. For example, you started, you want to do a research on the cultural factors that influence um, employee productivity. And you start by thinking that it's all about, um, let's say, culture and cultural norms is affecting employees' productivity. Then you get to the workplace, you get to the literature and realize that, oh, there's too much work on culture and work productivity. Maybe if you look at supervisor relationships or job design, it may be interesting. It means that the questions you didn't think about earlier, when you started that you out of interest or out of a problem you have seen in the company, you want to go to look at sociocultural issues in, job, um, in affecting productivity. Now you are realizing that there's a whole new area that has that needs research, which has to do with job design and employee productivity. So you want to research in that. So the literature review process helps you to establish new questions that may have not occurred to you, and also helps you to build a knowledge base for the future. Good. So what then is the process? How do you identify the literature to be able to do the literature review? Now, the literature review has a number of stages. The first stage is select and refine a topic, identify and locate literature, ensure relevance, record and retrieve, review and summarize, and write. Now, these six steps play a very key role in every literature process. So what you are trying to identify here is to understand the activities that are carried out in the literature review process. One is selecting and refining a topic. Two is identifying and locating literature. And three is ensure relevance. Now, the first three steps actually have a link with the definition that we are, the first part of the definition that we are trying to do today. Let's look at it again. The definition said that literature review is a synthesis of available resources and materials with a strong relation with the topic in question. Now, how do you start the literature review? Is it 
a synthesis of available resources and material with a strong relation with the topic in question. Means that before you start any literature review, you need a topic. Because how, where, which, what are you selecting the literature on if you don't have a topic? I hope you understand me. So the first step means that you have to have a topic before you start a literature review. Every literature review starts with a topic. Every literature review starts with a, Even if the topic is broad, it's even relevant, it's even good. Because you still have to have a topic to be able to begin a literature review. A topic is the starting point of a literature review. Now the second is identify and locate literature. Synthesis has to synthesize means that you are bringing two or more things together, two or more literature together. So if you don't identify the literature, what are you going to bring together? The third part is says that ensure relevance. You cannot choose literature that are not relevant to your topic area. Just as I said that if you are doing public administration and corruption, you cannot go and choose literature on fishing under the sea. It has no relationship. Unless the fishing industry is now corrupt and you are going to bring public administrators there. But that one is even far fetched. Don't, don't try to do that. So, what we'll say is that every topic that you choose, you select literature that's relevant to the topic so that you can be able to ask questions on that particular topic. So, that is why we have the first three steps. And this session, the part one of literature review, I looked at the first three select and refine the topic, identify and locate literature, and ensure relevance. Then, in the next section, we can then look at record and retrieve, review and summarize, and then write. Okay. So what does it mean? We have talked about how to select a topic, so I don't need to go about that. But the next thing that we have to think about is identifying the literature. There are different types of literature that are relevant for every academic study. So as a student, you should ask yourself, or as a, a researcher, you should ask yourself which literature will be relevant to the type of work you are doing. Now, now I have to put a question here that it all depends on what you are writing. For example, if you are doing a literature review for a long essay or a thesis, and you are now starting your work, one of the things that will be very important for you to be able to get your work done is to read, read scholarly journals. Journals play a very key role in every research activity because they present the contemporary perspective of the issue that you are trying to research on and a con contemporary critique. Good journals may have been reviewed by at least three people, the editor of the journal and two other reviewers. So by the time a case back is published, it has received enough critique for it to be refined and validated scientifically. Remember what I said about what research is, that the scientific community is the one that defines that a research is acceptable. So basic research gets its success when it is what? Published. So anytime you go into a scholarly journal, you're actually seeing works that have been published, has gone through some rigor. Not all journals are good. We'll talk about that later. But I want to just emphasize here that the journals that are very good for your academic study, by consultation, in consultation with your supervisor, you can give you some direction on which journals are good for your discipline. But those journals give relevant information towards your topic and contemporary critiques. Good. So the first thing that you want to try to consider is that if you are doing a thesis or writing a paper, scholarly journals should be about 70% of your work. Now, the next thing that you want to look into is to look at Journals have given you very good contemporary information and critiques on the topic. But then sometimes you need some definitions, you need some models to be able to understand. And you need some conceptual understanding about what exists about the topic. For example, you, want, you are doing a study on um, demand and supply, and you want to find an economist book that explains demand and supply. So you go for books. So after journals, the next good thing for you to read will be books especially for academic works in a university co context or in an academic context. You want to look at books too. Books gives you some definitions of concepts and explanations. Now, not all books are peer reviewed. It means that it's been reviewed by another reviewer. Sometimes it's somebody's opinion that's in the book. But you want to, especially textbooks play a very key role in explaining, explaining concepts to students. For example, uh, you may have a textbook that can even give a, an anthology of all the theories in your, your field. That will explain them in brief, so you to be able to understand what exists on that particular theory. Or you can have a book that is a collection of works done by on a particular topic. For example, cloud computing. A book can be written on cloud computing that each chapter is talking about cloud computing from a different perspective. So that could be a very good thing for you to look at. And that, in that sense, may be a very good edited book and I may have a lot of critical discussions in them. Some books also give foundation um, understanding of what you need to be able to do on your topic. Okay, so please 
books are relevant. The next one that I advise for every student is dissertations. Dissertations gives you an idea of how long essays are or theses are structured. So if you go back to your school or your department, you could ask for some of the very good long essays. Students who did maybe 70 and above in the university context in Ghana, that may be, play a very key role, or even 80 and above if you get one like that. Now, the reason why dissertations are good is that it helps you to get an idea of how to be able to structure your, your write-up. How do you, what, what kind of declaration and abstract, which one comes first? How do you do present table of content? How do you do, uh, how, how put you put images? What is the layout and the structure expected in your university? So, dissertations are good for that. It also so helps you to understand how to be able to put your whole work together. Most importantly, we don't require, we don't want students to go and look in dissertations and copy them. For example, you find another university which is not within the town that your university in, go there and take a dissertation, then copy it and submit it here. Now, currently, most of dissertations are being put online. So you may end up realizing that this thesis that you have copied and presented as yours, you are plagiarizing, and that could actually let you forfeit your whole degree. I've seen students who have actually done this in different countries before. A student of mine went to University of Lilia in Sweden and picked a thesis there and presented it here to me that it was his work. Unfortunately, he didn't read the table of contents and the acknowledgments that my name was there. The student who was doing the study on e-voting in Ghana at that time sent me the questionnaire and other information for me to read. So I gave some input into that work. So when the student brought the work, the Ghanaian student brought the work to me, I realized that this work doesn't belong to him. And I told him that this same internet you are stealing from, I've also got access to it. So why are you trying to present it as if it is your own work? Now some students are very smart. They go to a university that is also um, within Ghana or maybe within a different, um, within um, the same country, but they try to find off the shelf or non-electronic thesis. It means that it has not been put on the internet. So they go back. Maybe all the books, all the ones on the internet, on the university's website are electronic, but they, are, they start from maybe 2005. So every thesis before 2005, you go and take it and present it as yours. Now, you should know that the, the data will be outdated the literature will be outdated. So by all means, a literature can read between the lines that you're actually still in this content. So don't do that. Use it for to get an idea of how the layout should be done. When I went to University of Manchester, the first thing that I remember we did was done to us is that they showed us a couple of works showing you how an A thesis looks like and how a B thesis looks like and how a C thesis looks like. So that you, the student, can make a choice. You want to get A, B, or C. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Good. Now, the next one that uh, you go to is government documents, policy reports, assistance statistics, and periodicals. Now, these collection of materials are also good, but they help provide evidence to your arguments. For example, you go and say there have been tremendous increase in mobile phone penetration in Ghana. Says who? They can say something like, statistics from NCA, National Communication Authority, shows that as of 2014, October, the penetration rate of a mobile phone in Ghana was 112. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So they are using the statistic from NCA to support what you have done. So we are encourage you that you use government documents, policy reports, and, and existing statistics, and sometimes periodicals to support and substantiate your arguments that you are presenting in your work. So if I was doing something on poverty reduction, it's good for me to know what policies concerning poverty reduction in Ghana or in Nigeria, or what are the statistics of poverty or literacy rates in Ghana? For example, the, the Ghana Living Standards Survey, the SEX, recently launched, talks about the fact that the number one contributor to household income, 48%, is self employment. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So it gives you an indication, which is not regular empo formal employment, this is self employment. That means that being able, your, your source of house, household income comes from self-employment. gives you so much indication of the role of what entrepreneurship in the Ghanaian home. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So you use such reports to be able to substantiate your argument. So, and that should be fairly about 20 to 25% of your work. Because how would we read and understand your work if we can't find any relevant industry report in your work? It means that is your work being done outside industry? 
Now, it doesn't mean that every single work will have a statistic in it, but it's relevant, it helps. Okay. Now, how do you find the journals? In University of Ghana, you can go to this particular site to be able to find the journal. Every university has a way of finding journals. Now, there are journal databases that you has a, a collection of electronic journals for you to be able to have access to. And then there are other search engines that search the databases. So if you have a search engine like Google Scholar, it can help you to search other academic web databases or Cyrus, S-C-I-R-U-S dot com. It can also help you to be able to search these databases and then be able to get some information. Good. So I'm going to do some illustrations here. Mm so that we can get conversant to the databases. Now, what are some of the databases that exist? There's EBSCOhost, which houses, houses a number of American and European journals and some Asian journals. Emerald, which does a lot of European and Asian and some African journals. And then JSTOR, which also has a lot of different types of journals in them. Palgrave, which is a publisher and has its own journals. Sage is a publisher, has its own journals. Science Direct, publishes a different number, number of different journals. But I think he has a lot of them from Elsevier. Wiley is a publisher, has his own journals. A very good for strategic management. Taylor and Francis also has his own set of journals. So you are publishers that have their own databases. That means a collection of their own journals that they manage. And then we have also got others who are not publishers, but they also house a number of different journals. Some of them are publishers, but they also house their journals and other journals which belong to other publishers. Okay. So for someone who comes from an environment like a business school, but most of these journal databases will be relevant to you. Good. So if you go to medical school, to the other journal databases that are relevant to them. Med science Direct is very good for scientific information, computer science, engineering, physical sciences, and I won't say much of social science. Social sciences, you want to go to the other ones. It may have some information on social science, but I think it's much more focused on the sciences. The physical, chemical sciences, you have a lot of them from Science Direct. Okay, so let's see. Most of these databases require you to have subscription. Means that you should go to your university and find out how to be able to get the access passwords to these databases. Good. There are also other ones that are online which are relatively free. Like Google Scholar is a search engine, mostly disciplinary. Topics in development is on World Bank website. World Bank also has a number of databases that have statistics. Like the World Bank um, has a report called the Enterprise Survey. Has quite some good statistics on enterprise, um, start, start, starting up enterprises, managing enterprises in developing countries. Good. And then directory of open access journals to exist. And you have got African Journals Online, which is funded by Ford Foundation and House in South Africa. Has a number of the African journals listed out there. You can download up to three articles every single week or every single day. So you can't do more than that because it's a free account. If you want more, you have to pay for it. Okay. Good. Now, for University of Ghana, if you cannot access online, if you're on campus, you can get some access to most of these databases free. But if you have off campus, you have to go to the off campus platform and register. So I'm going to illustrate how to be able to access these um, databases. And we'll look at an example. Now, so this is off campus access. How then do we search? When you go to any of the databases, they all have a search box, basic search and advanced search. Advanced search helps you to be able to do more search means that you can combine different parameters like the author and the article title or the article title and the article content or something else so that you can be able to get more information even combine different keywords so that you can be able to search for more information or narrow down your search basic search is just one box like how google works you put it inside and then you, you to google you search for it then after your search has been done you look at the results and check for relevance then record and retrieve a review and summarize. So let me show what is going to be done. Okay. So we type the, I'm using University of Ghana as an example. Uh, when you go to 
Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. So, University of Ghana. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So, let me just take us through. When you go to University of Ghana website and the library, you have got BAM Library, Institutional Repository, Online Catalog, Research Guides, Off Campus Access. Off Campus Access will give you access to all the information, the databases that you need, but you need to have a password. So, that's what it's going to do for you. So, I'll go to BAM Library. And the BAM library, I can have access to the university's website. Okay. And underneath, you have resources. You have general databases. I can look at general databases from by subject. They have tried to categorize them by subject, or I can also look at it by A to Z. So I'll choose A to Z. Okay, A to Z. Now, A to Z here means that you have a number of art journals here, which you can be able to, which have been named, which have been named directly to alphabetical order. So, ACM Digital Library, which is very good for um, science students or those in the computer science or information studies or information systems. Academic Search Complete, which is powered by Escohost. You can also go in the African journals online. I mentioned it earlier. Agora, there's quite a lot of them. That's under A, B, and C. And so I'm going to do an example on EBSCO host and maybe Emerald. So let's start with Emerald. I'll start with Emerald and do that one. So I go to under E. Let me just close this button. Let's just give me related searches. Okay, under EBSCO host, I click on it and then it will take me to the EBSCO host login. Now, it's because I'm not on the University of Ghana site. I'm having this post. So, um, on the University of Ghana, we you can go to University of it's on uh, its webs. You can go to University of Ghana website and then visit BAM Library to be able to learn how to be. So, I'm now going to illustrate how to be able to search for articles through the University of Ghana website. So, first of all, we are going to leave. We're going to leave our slides here and then go to our, our browser. Okay. So this is the University of Ghana website. And the library, you have BAM library. You can click on BAM library. And sorry, I've gone got flash installed. So under that, you have got electronic resources. You can see that you have got research guides, general databases by subject or A to Z. I'll click on A to Z. And A to Z comes, A to Z starts from ACM Digital Library, um, which is very good for information system students and information science students, and then computer science students. You go to Academic Search Complete, which is by EBSCOs. Now, because we are in the investing network, if you open any of these, we are now A, A will give us A database or the journals that start with A. Then we go to E so that we can get Emerald. We go F Coast. 
So that's Emerald there. Now, because we're on the University of Ghana campus, when you open, it takes you straight to the EBSCO's page. The first page shows you basic search. Now, under basic search, what you also tend to realize is that what you also tend to realize is that you have articles that you can easily search through the database and get the articles you are looking for. First of all, you have basic search here. You have got advanced search. Now, zooming in a little, you realize that you can type your uh, whatever you are looking for under basic search. But advanced search will give you something better than basic search. It will give you opportunity to use a Boolean logic like end or or. For example, look at this. I could choose where I'm searching. What I'm searching, author, title, subject, or different things here. And I can combine two topics. So if I like, I can put in here on corruption. Now as you start typing in, it will give you some suggestions. Corruption, I can tell, put in here, Africa. Now it's very fast in responding to whatever you type in. So if your internet connection is also fast, you can be able to search very and get your articles as soon as you type it in. Now we are on the University of Ghana network, so you see University of Ghana here. Now if you search, if you're outside campus, you have to use the off-campus access, which I'll demonstrate later. So when you search, what you end up having is corruption articles that include Africa or have Africa in it. Now I can either say corruption but not Africa. So what I'll do is that I'll choose a different variable here if I want to remove the non African one from it. Oh sorry. Yes. So all that means I all will give me both corruption articles and African articles. But I want corruption and Africa. So I'm just trying to do corruption in Africa. So what do I get here? I have thousand eight hundred and fifty two articles. Now, whether the articles are general articles or periodicals is another thing because that I have to check on. Because one interesting thing about EBSCO is that it can give you periodicals like Economist magazine, um, and it can also give you information from Time magazine and other forms of global periodicals that exist. So, on this small button that here to open another um, button for you to refine your results so i can choose full text means that articles that are ready for you to download then references available those ones which i've got their reference list available and then i could choose scholarly journal so that i can narrow down to what is academic now if you look at it right now i mean that i'm choosing i've got articles starting from 1976 to 2015 quite a lot of them now i've narrowed down to 373 from the 1852 so it's good that you do a f you can refine your results. Don't you search? It's always good to refine your results. Now the first one is an article called "Corruption in the Modern Day Africa: A Possible Remedy," Journal of Pan African Studies. Then another one is "A Possible Solution for Corruption in South Africa with the Church as Initiator." That's interesting. So that one is from a Theology Studies Journal. And then you have another one saying extra territorial approach to anti-corruption now what you realize is that a review of frameworks and implementation challenges all these first three articles are talking about how to combat corruption but coming from different different perspectives one is on um a possible remedy okay we have to click on it to look at the article in 2014 we have to look at the abstract we have to get an idea of how they are going to corrupt um uh, do something about it maybe education may be suggested Another one is about the church and its role in combating corruption. Another one is extraterritorial approach to corruption, integrity and public service ethics in Africa. So you realize that as you start going through the articles, you see different aspects of corruption. And it gives you an idea that if you want to do something on corruption in Africa, you can have different perspectives. Somebody can do a research on corruption in Africa from the Czech perspective, but or corruption from the Ghanaian Czech perspective, maybe looking at Ghana as a, as an a, as churches in Ghana and what they how they can contribute to curbing corruption in Ghana. So that could be a topic that you could uh, research on. Sometimes looking at the articles can or reviewing the articles on the screen can give you an idea of subtopics or what are the key gaps that are research that have been done and what has not been done so i can see here that there's quite some research on the on church there's one research on church and 
and corruption. I'm seeing that corruption as an institution among small businesses in Africa. That's another thing. They worship in churches. Another issue about church again. That's interesting. So you are seeing that some research on church and this church and corruption, church and corruption in Africa. So that means that if there's not much on Ghana, because we have seen one in South Africa, there was another one that was earlier pointed out. You could also bring the Ghanaian perspective on church and corruption in Africa. That's a very interesting way of looking at it. Because now corruption is African south of the Sahara. Because that is also coming from another perspective, a facilitator or handicap to follow development. That's another view. That means more about the effects of corruption. The other ones look at combating corruption and look at the effects of corruption. So you can also look at this other. any corruption in Africa through United Nations inspections. That is another way of mitigating corruption. A state of human trafficking and human rights issues in Africa. Now, if this is coming up, there's no corruption in the title. That means, but it doesn't mean that the issue doesn't, the topic doesn't discuss corruption. It means that it's actually on human trafficking and human rights issues. And there's maybe some underlying factor about corruption. So we got aiding it or trying to find a way of how, point out how corruption has led to these issues. Local determinants of U.S. onward, outward FDI into Sub-Saharan Africa may have a link to corruption. So you can continue on. Now, another good thing about um, EBSCO is that it can also give you a way of narrowing down to academic journals, not just scholarly journals, but separating the book reviews from the academic journals. You could also narrow down to other subtopics. For example, if you look at the Tezaro stems, you can see that there are the, the, these are subtopics within the search that you have done. Economic development, if you want to look at corruption and democracy, you have got 60, and the petroleum industry. I'm interested in petroleum industry, so I'm taking on that. And let me see what I'll get. Now I have only 13, oil and armed conflicts in Africa. So now you see I've got that. And then oil corruption and the, the resource case. Case, sorry. Addressing oil-related corruption in Africa is a push for for transparency enough you see when you start narrowing down you can get different perspectives on the same topic that you want to research on sometimes by looking at this it gives an idea of how to be able to map out or categorize your literature if you're downloading these papers you could actually download them based on the things you are seeing the ones on the church could go in one folder you can also download them um, and then the ones on oil could go in another folder the ones on economic development could go to another folder good you see a second scramble for Africa's oil. There's so much China's oil diplomacy in Africa. There's so much on that pointed out here. Categorizing then helps you to have a first level of screening of the topics that you have had. So if I was writing and I have a folder on church and corruption and I have another folder on church, uh, on oil and corruption in Africa, what I could say is that research on corruption in Africa has been studied from different perspectives. Some authors have looked into the church and its role in mitigating corruption in Africa. Others have also looked at UN inspections and how it can curb corruption in Africa. Others have also looked at oil and how whether it contributes to uh, corruption in Africa and whether a push for transparency would actually be a way of mitigating corruption in Africa. See, what have I done? I've summarized what is within the papers. And we said the definition is about what? A description. We said a synthesis of available resources and materials with a strong relation to a topic accompanied by a description. A description means that you find out what is out there, what is in there, and that's what I've just done. Before I go to a critical evaluation, qualitative analysis of each work, I've, I've not done that part. But I'm just showing that a description is about summarizing what is out there. Now, what would change if I use that same corruption in Africa in Emerald? So I go to Emerald, and Emerald too has a database and uh, this is just the basic search but let's see the Emerald advanced search which you can find here I'm also brought to you by University of Ghana because we are in the University of Ghana so you see it here I'm underlining that part or pointing to it you see that the University of Ghana is here now I've zoomed in so the search term with Emerald you can search the abstract of the article so you want to search articles that have within the abstract something of corruption in Africa that could be one way or you can look at the publication title or quantum item title or you can search for the author okay so I want to search the abstract for corruption and then I also also want to make sure that not end 
the abstract again having something on what Africa because I want the most relevant articles to come now sometimes if you go too narrow you cannot it may just give you a few papers if you also go too broad to give you too much so what do I have here I have all dates last month I just want to keep it open so I click on search and what do I have here I have how many articles 60 articles because of what I was searching fighting corruption in Africa do existing corruption controls levels matter a research paper international journal of development issues see what is there I could click on the abstract to see whether it's very relevant I could click if I like it I can download the PDF directly corruption from a cross cultural perspective that's interesting conceptual paper that means it doesn't have data corruption a challenge to group governance a South African perspective a case study means that is a uh, has some data on a case of how to, um, good governance um, was affected by corruption in South 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 Africa corruption secrets in access to information leg legislation in Africa across national study of political institution interesting then you have depth embedding corruption impacts African market dynamism Conceptual about translational law and technology as forces against corruption. Okay, fighting corruption successfully. A viewpoint, measurements and market deconstru deconstructing the corruption perception index. Corruption and from the Islamic perspective, some recommend. You see, we saw from the church perspective. Now you see that religion and corruption have a relationship. Now you realize that the papers that we found in Eskos is quite different from the papers that we are seeing in Emerald. That means that's why I was saying that some of the databases focus on some journals, others also focus on other journals. But it's also sometimes likely for you to find a paper that was in Emerald and also in Eskos. The more journals you use, you also increase our ability of finding different articles which contributes to the richness of your writing or of your write-up. Otherwise, you have only one type of articles that you may not have other perspectives. These ones are bringing other perspectives. You have seen from the Islamic perspective on the resource case, case and private investment. We saw something like that earlier. Then there's quite a number of Kevin financial crime among third world elites and there's a lot of them okay so what we have seen here is that as soon as you open it you find out your article you can actually open up for example there was one on Islamic let's see there's one on Islamic let me see new colonialism effect of foreign aid on corruption that's interesting um, then South African transnational commendation okay corruption here money laundering some development Africans anti money laundering critique of okay quite a number of them here now what we could actually do is to open I was looking for the one on the Islamic let's see I just wanted to church we saw the one on the church Corruption from the Islamic perspective. So open there. And it's in the journal of Islam, International Journal of Islamic um, and Middle Eastern Finance and Management. So if you come here, you see that it tells you that it highlights where the paper finds every Africa and corruption. Remember what we we're looking for Africa corruption, Africa corruption. So this is the paper. You can read the abstract to show whether you want to actually download them or not. So it tells you that. The findings are here. See, the paper examines the method that like examines corruption in the light of the Quran and Hadith. It looks at related issues and corrupt practices in industrialized world based on secondary sources and a few primary data. See, and then there is the purpose of the paper and the originality. What is the contribution? The paper informs educationalists, policy makers, and entrepreneurs in the MENA region, that's the Middle East and North Africa region that islamic ethics must be the guiding force behind all good economic attitudes so this is a contribution it has done now when you find a paper you can and you are interested in that if i was doing something religion and corruption this is a paper that i would like to download sometimes when you find a paper and you download it you may realize that the paper title is almost close to what you want to do if i was doing something on religion and 
um, corruption. The two the paper two papers I saw on church and corruption in F schools, and then this one on Islamic plays a very key role. I'll classify them as highly relevant papers. Sometimes you can also find papers that if you they may not be closely related to your topic, but there may be a section of the paper that is very relevant to your topic. So if you look at a subsection, you may have some issue of the definition of corruption or the history of corruption. That paper will maybe may not be as as intimate to your topic as the first one which was on the church because you're doing a topic on religion and non what corruption so the second one that the second paper that just gives you a good definition and background to corruption may become a medium relevant paper then you have a low relevant paper that just maybe mentions correction one or two which may use as hanging fruits in your work i'll show them what i mean by hanging fruits later so you have three types the highly relevant paper which is very close to the theme that you are looking for or the media relevant that gives you some an, an background understanding and definitions and explanations of theories and models which is relevant to the bigger theme you see the bigger theme here is corruption the sub theme here is more about africa so the paper that is very highly relevant has closeness to both your bigger theme and then your sub theme or your, your broad theme and your sub theme then the medium theme is more concerned about just your broad theme the low hanging fruits is maybe related to any of both of them or any of them but it's just an indication of uh, you have found quite a lot on the first two themes and these are just an add-on it's not necessarily necessary to have it there but it also shows that you have found for example if you find 10 papers on church and corruption and they are all from africa the 11th and 12th paper becomes just an add-on because you have found the same stories being told so we usually call them the hanging fruits or the low relevant paper which you may not use entirely and need to read the whole work but you may use it sparingly within your work to show that there are other works in africa coming from the same topic and i'll show you when we start writing so now you have been able to sh see how we can use both epsco host and emerald emerald like epsco also has an ability for you to refine your search means i can search within the search you got you can refine your search and search within a search record now look at it the keyword is corruption remember on epsco is on the left hand side of the screen on emerald is in the right hand side of the screen you also have a, a refined search parameters so i can choose all the papers which are on governance eight of them if you click on it to just give you those ones let's see so eight papers have come corruption and good governance this one is about governance this is about governance Republic of Benin, chaos, corruption, and development in telecommunications. So, something about governance, the e-governance for an improved sect public sector delivery in India, Ethiopia, and Fiji. So, it's a cross-national study, and you see it there. So, sometimes using these sub themes can help you select the papers that are relevant to your area. The subject areas can work. Economy and organization has one paper among the eight I have. So Emerald and Esco host, all both of them have refine ability for you to refine your research. Refine your search. Okay. So now let's go back to our articles. We have been able to download our articles. Then what do we do next? The next thing that we do is we try to find out whether we can be able to categorize them, make relevance out of and identify the relevant papers out of them. So how do you do that? Most of the time, some students just keep on saving their, their, the PDFs they have found. Especially if they use a platform like maybe um, Emerald or Eskos or even Google Scholar. I didn't demonstrate Google Scholar. So let me just quickly do that. Just give me a second. Let me just do Google Scholar. So how do we use Google Scholar? Google Scholar will give you an ability for you to search all the databases and add that other databases which are just for conferences so it is also give you some of the access to some of the articles that have been uploaded on people's own personal site for example as an author i may publish something i may put it in a journal article which you have to pay but i may also put another version maybe the conference version on my own personal website so google can give you both the one from the general general database and the one for my personal website the general database is if i go there they will not give me the one for my personal website so sometimes it helps we as researchers to find out other works that other people have done one other platform is a social network that you can also use is called ResearchGate. 
that gives you authors and the papers that they publish so you can contact an author and they can show you some of the papers they publish so i'll show you google scholar that is this is scholar.googlescholar.google.com So that is it and i can type corruption africa again see what is how we have here everyday corruption in the state now it's giving me a book the criminalization of the, st of the state in africa a moral economy of corruption in africa 1999 journal of modern african studies i told you that i can go into journals too um this one to use political corruption coming from a university website this is corruption economic growth and in income inequality coming from springer springer so is a publisher um corruption equality and the rule of law okay coming from a university website a chair of corruption based on constitutional corruption in public services and government of british colonies and ex-colonies in west africa is sociological review 1961 quite a long <laughs> So there's a lot that you can find here and you can also search the search within this particular search that you have another thing about google scholar is that you can save it so if you have logged into your google you can save it and bookmark these articles and return to them later if the pdf is available you can also download them you can download them now there is another platform ssrn.com this is a platform where voluntarily authors can go there and upload their own content or their own articles especially um, articles that they are published in journals and in in uh, conferences or working papers they are working on so this is also another database you could actually search the same corruption inside and you may find a list of different papers that either people if either they are working on them or they are finished working on them and they are published them so they may put some um copies of these papers there you can also get to know about the authors so i just search for corruption africa see economic development in Middle east it's a working paper and uh, then you have foreign direct investments now and then there's other ones that have been published and um you could actually look at the papers research papers some of from university websites quite a lot of them it's a very good place to be able to see upcoming work work that have been done in the past on the topic areas you are researching on so i've shown you ssrn.com i've also shown you google scholar scholar.google.com and i've also shown how to use um ebscohost and how to use emerald so what we don't want you to do is that if you find these articles you start saving them pdf1 pdf2 pdf3 on your computer it doesn't make sense to save them as pdf1 pdf1 pdf2 after five days we come back you don't even know what was in pdf1 it's always good to save them with an article title or a subject area title or a topic that can let you remember remember we saw something on a church in south africa and corruption so i can just move south africa church corruption as a title it gives me an idea that the country of the paper is south africa the topic is church and it is also on corruption so anytime i come back to it and i click on it i can remember what it is now the best thing that you try i would advise you to do is that in categorizing them categorize either by, based by things or you can go to categorize based by countries especially depending on if you're doing something on a particular uh, geographic region or you want to compare different geographic regions together remember when we're looking for gaps we said there is something called contest gap where you compare one geographic region to another geographic region or you can compare issues so you look at the issues that have been discussed or you can compare um what else methods good so i have my title here or my topic my key topic here corruption in africa then i can categorize them by the key themes so i have something on the church I, or religion so religion is here that's one issue and then i also have something on economic factors and how you can curb search can curb corruption i could have another one here which is much more focused on let's say um we what do we what else did we find yes oil yes the oil industry i have one here and that's economics 
and they have we had something on UN UN inspectors could also be here so what we, then you have is that you have something on religion in the, in the religion, I have one example. I had one paper from South Africa, another paper from another country on the church, and I had one on the Islamic um, society, that is one, or the MENA region, which was also here. So I have three examples there. I have oil papers. A number of oil papers can come here. That's oil. And I have on economics, cyber crime, um, economic financial crimes, and other topics that are related to economy and finance. And, uh, and uh, corruption and then i also had something on here that has to do with um sorry you and the u.n inspectors or the role of international institutions in mitigating or, or extra, um, external institutions in mitigating corruption in africa so i could have them here so you can put your article in here and which could be corruption in Africa, and then put your key themes. We had one on oil, which can be idea three. Idea two could be religion. Idea one could be finance, economics, issues on corruption. And then idea four could be on the role of external institutions like the UN and other um, corruption index, global corruption indexes, and its impact on carbon corruption or preventing corrupt, corrupt behavior among politicians in Africa. So that could be another one. So if I want to write, I can look for examples on the themes. On oil, we had about three papers in EBSCO. On religion, we had one paper in EBSCO, and one paper in Emerald on Islamic, uh, this, um, uh, in the MENA region, and corruption. And then we had about two papers on the church and its role in combating corruption from EBSCO. On finance and corruption, we also had something on financial crime and corruption and other economic development and corruption from both EBSCO host and Emerald. And then on the, on the idea four, we had perception, um, corruption perception index, and we also had the UN inspectors and their role in mitigating corruption in Africa. So what I have here is that I have an article, a, t a, t a title of an article here or corruption in Africa in the middle, and I've been able to put different ideas around that. That helps me to be able to create my folder. So I have four folders. Each folder has sample papers in them. What it then helps me is that if I want to write, I can say corruption has been studied from different perspectives in Africa. From one, from the economic perspective, A, B, C, D has been done. From the religious perspective, corruption has been discussed, examining the role of the church and, and, and Islam in Caribbean corruption or, or Islamic attitudes or Islamic ethos in carbon corruption we have also seen corruption in the oil industry and how our oil industry either becomes a conduit for corruption or becomes a, 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 and the need for transparency in that industry could help curb corruption and the role of un inspectors and other corruption perception indexes and whether carbon corruption among politicians in africa see what i've done what we have here is that we have articles that are built around all of them so you put the main topic in the middle and they add the keywords which are coming from the papers that you have. And that is how you start categorizing your literature meaningfully. So that whenever you're going to do that, you can look for it easily. Now, another person could actually make idea one country. So here, or continents, here be, if it was Africa, I can make here West Africa, South Africa, Southern Africa, Eastern Africa, and maybe Northern Africa. So then once on the Islam will come here, the ones on the church on other from other West Africa or from Eastern Africa will go to their different categories. The ones on Nigeria may go to where they belong to. Now, what I've done is then is to categorize them based on countries. But sometimes it's almost good, it's better to categorize based on the issues before you start thinking about countries. Because the issues helps you to understand the the things that have been discussed. Then after that you can do it based on the countries or based on the regional distribution. Mm okay now when you have done this you have to do something we call an article summary because the articles are plenty sometimes you have found about 20 articles question is that 20 each article may have 15 pages 15 times 20 is 300 pages of reading you have to do which is quite difficult for any person who is trying to do a new long essay to finish reading all of them before you start writing what we advise is that you could actually do a quick read for each of the articles and do a summary. An article summary helps you to be able to identify what are the key nuggets or key issues or key um, points of relevance from an article. So you open the article, you write the name of the author on a sheet of paper. This is only one page. 
Then you look at the research question, which can be found in either the introduction or the abstract. And then you can find the research framework that was used, which is any model that was used, what methods did they use in collecting the data, what are the key findings and the conclusions, and what are the gaps for future research. We pointed out that gaps can be found in the introduction and then the out at the end of each academic paper, at the end of it. So you can actually compare these two parts to be able to get some gaps for your work. Now, and if you are using Emerald, let me go back and show you something. If you're using Emerald, Emerald has a very interesting way of doing some of these summaries for you already in their, in their abstracts. For example, if I go to find this, what is corruption corrupting? A philosophical point of view. And uh, this is a conceptual paper. And this one is to be corrupt or not to be corrupt. A bureau, a, understand the behavioral side of corruption in Indonesia. So this one, I've gone beyond Africa. So let's see. I click on, if I click on the, pa the paper's abstract, it will give me an outline of how papers are summarized. So you see, the purpose of this paper is to, of uh, this paper, which is based on the author study, is to shed light on the behavioral elements of corruption in particular to decision-making processes undertaken by potential offenders to construct a solid basis for effective corruption eradication strategy in Indonesia. The study examines corruption in Indonesia in the past two years. So at least, you see, what Emerald has done here is that they have summarized the paper for you, the person, to come and do a quick read and then identify what is key among them. But what I expect us to learn is Emerald tells you the purpose, the, the design findings, implications, practical implications, research implications, and originality and value. In the same way, when you go into the journal, when you go into your own article summary, what I want us to be able to appreciate is to be able to do something like that, but not to copy Emerald's own. Because we, we want to open the article on our computer before printing and identify the page numbers. What page number do you see the a framework? What page numbers do you see the research method? What are the key things that you are seeing there? Is there a definition for? You are looking for what are the key nuggets in the article that you can use later in your write-up. For example, on page 22, there is a definition for corruption you are interested in. Maybe there is a um, cultural definition and then there is an economic definition. So you can then make a note of it. When you do this for all the different training papers you have done, in just one sheet. It makes it easy for you to do reference them when you are doing your write-up. When you don't learn how to do this, you end up trying to go through everything, read it, and you forget which page numbers when you start writing. So writing uh, your literature review is always based on what you have read and what you have been able to summarize. So this one sheet helps you to be able to identify what the key issues that are in each paper. So you open the book and then you start identifying what is the key issues in this paper. And by that time, by the time you start your work, you have actually been able to get what is relevant for your work to be done. Okay. So if I was writing on corruption, I could actually do one sheet on the on a paper, which is like the Islamic paper we saw or the church paper that we saw on corruption. And what we can actually do is that I can get to know the name of the author, the problem or the question that he has. You can see, find some of them in the abstract. But I'll go beyond and open it to see through, go through the paper, find out what are the, some of the key issues that have been discussed, the methods that have been used, the conclusions that are relevant to me, and then the key gaps for future research. But I'm trying to do it in one sheet, so I'm identifying the page numbers and my, making notes by the side of the page numbers so that I can refer back to them later. That is a good way of doing a summary. So for our practical assignment, which we give out all the time, what we want you to do is to go back to Emerald and then download this paper. Look for this paper. Mobile phones and micro trading activities. And then download this particular mobile phone and micro trading activities. And then use it to use this article summary to summarize it and see whether you can be able to learn how to do it. Cool. When you finish, bring it to the um, You can be able to uh, appreciate how to summarize a paper, compare it with you trying to read the whole paper before you could have the same understanding. Mm. You can do it in one or two times. You can help you to be able to polish up your skill. Okay. So thank you, and we'll meet you next time to discuss how to write your review.